we're the same. Just so you know, the common thread yeah. between every successful man is that he recognizes that he doesn't know everything. It's the guy who thinks he knows everything is the guy who's going to fail. Yeah. That guy can't learn anything. His mind is closed. You know, I live my life knowing that I don't know everything. Teach me more. I watch very carefully. My mind is open and receptive. Kids out of college, they know everything. They learn from the professor who's there. And why is there a professor teaching him? Because if he could make a lot of money, that professor, he wouldn't be teaching. He'd be making a lot of money. So you take it with a grain of salt. You learn some basic things that by the time you get out of college are antiquated and old thinking anyhow. So you gotta know, I'm coming out of college, I know nothing. Let me hook on with somebody who could teach me and I can believe in them. You gotta trust someone. Yeah. And you live, and you live by your principles and you work hard and you, and, you know, you don't always get immediate gratification. You know, and uh, that's the key. I respect these companies that start in their garages. You know, nothing. Nothing will stop them. So, curi so I'm curious. So, you're f and if this is personal, you feel free. You don't need to. Oh yeah, I'm worried about. It. <laughs> so you're so you're Jewish. The assumption is for a lot of people that I'm curious. a cheap motherfucker. No, no, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no that do you come from money or how that? I come from zero. I did not grow up with a mother or a father. I lived with my grandparents for a while, then I went to a couple of foster homes. I never had anybody do anything for me, ever. The most embarrassing moment in my life when I was 15 and I couldn't tell time on a watch because nobody taught me. And I said, and they were making fun of me. And from that day, that was never gonna happen again. You know, I had pants that were too short because nobody was buying me clothes. And they used to laugh at me and call me high waters. They, uh, you know, I didn't have any kind of a haircut. You know, they used to cut it for you in the house and, and I had no clothes. And, and you want to know what? It made me a better man. But I knew that back then, I didn't know the right fork to use. Nobody taught me anything. Nobody told me you brush your teeth. We take so many things for granted that we give our children to them. But I didn't have anybody to tell me to do anything. And down to the simplest little things from washing your hands. And, uh, and what that did made me realize that I'm not going to need anybody ever. And it made me a little lonely at times, but I've learned how to be alone and survive on my own, and I will never be dependent on anybody. So at this point in my life, when I've got three or four such incredible friends and the most wonderful woman in my life that I can finally let down and trust, and I do depend on her a little bit. It's hard. So, yes, it's been great for me. That upbringing was very good for me in business. But that, well, you gotta remember that had the price I had to pay. That's crazy. So you had no We used to put ketchup in hot water and have tomato soup. Meat for us was a bologna sandwich. And by the way, don't cry for me because I thought it was great. I didn't know any better. Life was good. I was brought up by good people. They just weren't there for me, but they treated me nice. They took care of me. They fed me. I mean, a big night was a couple of grilled cheese sandwiches and I was in heaven. You had pasta. You put ketchup on it. Did you ever have a ketchup sandwich? You learn to like anything. Food just wasn't that important. To this day, it still isn't. I just, I find it very difficult to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on a meal. Not that a lot of these great restaurants aren't worth it. I just find it very difficult because of the way I was brought up. But for my wife, anything, you know? So that's why this trip to Italy is so important. I'm taking my wife, money is not an object, anything she wants, you know, nothing, nothing's more important to me than her. I give all this up for her. I'll make sure she gets copied this one. No, I don't get, <laughs> still don't get laid that often. <laughs> <laughs> hey, priorities. So is there anything you miss a lot more from those days than today? 
Yeah, you know, when I started in the business, I was taught by some really strong, wonderful old timers who were not gone. They should rest in peace. When we used to go and sell clothing and manufacture clothing, we embraced our competition. Look, we were all friends. When you went into a store, you talked about the other guy's line, how nice it was. You know, because everybody had got a piece. Today it's cutthroat. All different type of walks of life are in the clothing business. And, and, and all businesses. It got very complicated and got very mean and very mean spirited. There was a time where we all went out and everybody got their orders and we were all happy. We traveled together. We went out to dinners with the buyers together, you know? And it was a lot of fun. And I think that's a lot, a lot of businesses. It takes place in a lot of businesses today. You know, it's not fun anymore. There are small companies that I come in contact with and I say to them, anything I can do to help you? And they look at me and go, why? What do you want from us? I don't want anything. Can't I just be nice? Only one has taken advantage of that situation and they've done very well from it. But they all think that I'm up to something. I just want to see young guys get a break and have the right attitude. You don't have to cut somebody's throat to get ahead. I had a friend of mine say to me two weeks ago, he says, hey, my competition's going out of business. I'm in, uh, it's great for me. And I turned to him and said, that's the biggest mistake you've ever made. When one person in your industry goes out, it's bad for the whole industry. We want us all to be solid. We want us all to be strong. There's plenty of business for everybody. That attitude is what's killing America. We need to be kinder, gentler, and yet you can still do a lot of business. You know, share a little bit. How much is, too, how much is enough? And I'm learning that the hard way now. Like Everybody comes to you with new businesses and I'm at the point where I say, no thank you, no thank you. And they think I'm crazy. I'm finally, finally getting to the quality of life stage. I'm only down to six companies now. <laughs> you know, I love what I do. I'll never stop doing something. It's just a matter of, I wish I had, you know, my daughter's stepping up. I wish I had more people to step up behind me and help me run the business next generation. But I've got some very dear, lovely friends. I've got Nicole and Glenn, my stepdaughter, my stepson, and my daughter Nicole, you know. So you're a true, true rags to riches story. Well, riches is a very, very relative term. I mean, according to this world, though. Well, again, the whole world really isn't like this. You know, we were all brought up how much money you can make. Thank God I took enough time to be with my family. And like I said, I'm going to go backwards and spend some more time with my family for me. I'd always spend time with the family for them. So, like I always tell you with little Isaiah, you just love them and you hug them and you spend every minute you can with them. You know, a day hasn't gone by with my daughter that's sitting out there with my little beau that I haven't told them I love them. 28 years for her, no matter where I was on the continent, no matter where I was on the planet, and my little 12, my 12 year old, not a day's ever gone by, and my other son, never where I haven't told my children I love them. So I have to get to this. What are you worried about with your kids? Because, I mean, look, my dad, I remember, my, my dad did okay, and he, he, uh, he was rags rich, or he wasn't rich, but he was in Korea, he was total, super, I saw his old, I was like super, super poor, you know, bad, you know, country living.